Luther Perkins was a, oh, this isn't right. Hang on a second. Ah, there we go. Luther Perkins was a genius. They say that someone who can take something complicated and make it simple is a genius, but I would argue Luther Perkins was a genius because he could keep things simple and it would just fit in there perfectly. So today we're gonna to take a look at Folsom Prison Blues and I'm gonna show you why that guy was a genius. Okay, so you might not be familiar with the name Luther Perkins, but he was part of the Tennessee Two and eventually the Tennessee Three, which was Johnny Cash's band way back when he got started at Sun Studios. And one of the things that Luther was so good at was just making really simple lines, taking those and turning it into just country gold. Because let's face it, Johnny Cash and his voice was the star. So Luther knew how to fit into that pocket and get things going. We're going to take a look at Folsom Prison Blues in three ways. We're going to look at the Johnny Cash rhythm part, which is a great beginner piece. We're going to look at Luther's part, his rhythm part, which was a really simple just alternating bass line, which is a very old classic country thing that fits in perfectly. And then we'll take a look at his solo, which just uses a couple of really simple concepts like triads and inversions to just make a really nice piece. So here we go. First things first, we're going to do this in E. It seemed like on the original recording is an F, but if you watch any live versions, I think they actually tuned up half a step to get to F. So, if you want to play it in F, you can be my guest and use more chords to do it, or you can maybe put a capo on it. For the purposes of this lesson, though, we're going to do it in E because that's kind of how Luther played it. He was just tuned up half a step. So, here's what we're going to do first. We're going to talk about Johnny's part, the rhythm part. So, Folsom Prison Blues is a nice and easy song to do. It's just a 1-4-5. So, for Johnny's part, he's just playing, in this case, E. A, and he's doing like a B9 it looks like to me or you could just play a B major but you really want to do the B9 let's face it I'll teach you that chord in a second now here's the interesting part about Johnny's playing the important part to remember is he's so the way Johnny is playing it is he's just kind of going Even they say in some of those old Johnny Cash recordings, they would put like a dollar bill in the strings. If you go to Sun Studios, they'll tell you the story of like he was just doing this. They didn't have a drummer. It was just upright bass, electric guitar, Telecaster, and then Johnny strumming the acoustic guitar. So you would kind of get... about that rhythm and kind of muting the strings a little bit with your hands. He's really only hitting the... So he's alternating low E and he's hitting the B string on the A and then when he goes to the A he's hitting the open A and then open E. He's getting that alternating bass. Now he doesn't have to be perfect because he's just playing rhythm, so you're just kind of like... Now, when he gets to the B, we're using a B9 here. So a B9, and it's a very big time rockabilly chord, is on the A string, second fret, D string, first fret, G string, th second fret, and then you're also doing that on the B string, so you get this. It's used a ton. Now when Johnny's playing it, he's kind of hitting it and then taking this finger up and alternating. So 
you see what I'm saying there? You're alternating. Boom, chick, boom. E. So you're kind of getting this, you're alternating between the one and the five. And then the A is one and five. And that's Johnny's part. All right, now it's time for probably one of the most famous intro licks of all time. So Luther was the king of this kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is this one here, right? So second fret, A string. First fret, D string. And back to the second fret, A. And then second fret on the E string, you're gonna bend that up. So you get. Now, here was the thing about Luther. He was kind of doing the same back and forth. So once you get that, then you go into the rhythm. And then Luther's was kind of the same thing. A lot of times though, he was using this E here. So he was kind of hitting, mostly focusing instead of on the low E, which you could do. He was focusing a lot more on the, an octave up E that is the second fret on the D string. So he was kind of getting this. Same thing, he was kind of working on those higher frets. You could go down, but Luther was mostly staying up uh, on the open strings here, so. to think about with Luther's part. He was doing a lot of leading tones, so he would be going. So he, when he would go, when he would get ready to change to the A, he would be like here, and then he would hit open E, second fret E, fourth fret E, then he would bend to go back to the E. So, and then when he would switch back to the E, he would be in the second fret open E to go back. So you would get. And then when he would change to the B from the E, a lot of times I think he was kind of hitting the A twice, open A. And then on the first fret A. And then so he would lead in. And then when he would go back to the E from the B. So let's run through that one again. Starting on the E. So that gets you, that was the thing about Luther. It was, and it was a lot of, cho he's not like ringing out the notes, right? It's very subtle and, and, and muted, kind of like. Luther stuff, it's very subtle. Even when you listen to the song, you're, it, it almost sounds like 
the electric guitar and the acoustic guitar mixing together, which is actually what I think is really cool about it. All right, now it's time for that really, really famous lead line. So let's get in here a little tighter. So if you're doing it in E, so you're gonna be starting here. We're going, it's on the B string, the B and the high E. And we're starting here at the eighth fret and you're gonna slide into the ninth. Then on the high E string, seventh fret. It's all about the rhythm of it. So light it in, seventh fret, 10th fret. So it would be like this. Okay, ready? kind of drops down into the fifth fret there. And then you're gonna get into this really great thing he does with triads on an A major chord with inversions. So don't let the theory throw you off. So an A major chord has the A, it's third, which in this case is a C sharp, and it's fifth, which in this case is an E. So what he's doing, he's got his, he's fretting, like you're fretting an open A chord. So on the second fret, D string and G string, fret those down. Actually, you wanna bar kind of everything here to get his sound. And he's taking his pinky, it's a stretch, but he's taking his pinky and he's putting it all the way on the fifth fret here. That's, that's it there, so it's like. A. Then he just kind of rocks on the E for a second. Let's think about this again. So, all right, so for the A, that really nice build up thing, he's kind of doing some A inversion. So you bar at the second fret here, pinky on the fifth. And then he's doing an A major chord here at the fifth fret. High B and high E on the fifth fret. And then you wanna get your sixth fret on the G. And then I like to grab this A here on the D string, seventh fret. So that's one inversion of the A. And then the final is right here at the ninth fret. You're going nine, 10, nine. And that gives you another A major inversion. And I'll do another lesson soon on minor and major triads and a couple of inversions that you want to learn. They're in a lot of rockabilly and uh, old country. This is one of them here, this shape, which is, which it kind of looks like if you think about an open D chord, it's just you slid it all the way up to the ninth fret. So he's just doing that. And then he's just going back to the E, then he's back to the rhythm. He's not really playing anything else. He might be emphasizing those you know, those root notes. And the B. And he's walking that down, so. Uh, A string third, or A string second fret, first fret, then you're bending that. Second fret, high, low E. And then we're back onto it. So there you have it, Luther Perkins, genius in simplicity. He just made everything just sound so good and in the pocket. So 
Maybe we'll do some more Luther Perkins stuff later. Uh, plan on doing some more lessons on triads and just some real common rhythms and things that those guys did. So um, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell. So feel free to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.